This is the strangest board we've seen in a while. This is the brand new Gigabyte TRX50 AI Top. Don't be fooled by this board being a TRX50 board because the Keynote out there will already see what makes this different to other TRX50 boards. Let's dive in and take a look. This video is brought to you by VIPSCDKey.com. Have you ever installed Windows 11 only really to see the watermark of death? You don't need to fork out a couple of hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor from VIPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price. You can use our code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. How good is that? That takes that already cheap Windows 11 key and makes it even cheaper. It's easy as placing your order. Bingo, bingo. You've got your new key on your orders page. You chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. Link in the description. On with the video, back to you, Nick. Here it is, the Gigabyte TRX50 AI Top. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this board. Now, there's not a lot, to be honest here. All right, out of the way, here we go. Open up these two black flaps. First of all, we've got some SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. These are nice braided cables with fabric on them. This is the most interesting thing you need to be aware of. This is a 24 pin power connector. Essentially what this does is this cable will allow you to turn on two power supplies with a single 24 pin power cable because of all of the additional PCIe power. That's basically the easiest way to explain what this cable does. It turns on two power supplies. There's a Wi-Fi antenna with the new antenna connector for Wi-Fi 7 that's built into this motherboard. There's also the multilingual installation guide. This will show you how to put RAM in slots and how to socket a STR5 based CPU. There's also the user manual. This is pretty handy if you want to know what anything is with this board because there is quite a lot going on with this board. As well as that, there's the G connector. This basically just makes all the front panel cables a single connector. There's also this DisplayPort cable because you can use DisplayPort pass through with the USB 4 ports on the back of the board. And there are some thermal and acoustic probes to measure what the temperatures are inside of your system. And so the system can hear how loud it is. But here it is, ladies and gents, the Gigabyte TRX50 AI Top. Let's take a bit of a closer look because there's quite a lot going on here with this board. There's a front panel audio header. And for some reason, there's two three pin five volt addressable RGB headers. There's an ESP IDB header. This is really used for doing diagnosis on the VRM. There's a TPM header in case you wanted to use a third party TPM or this board. There's also two USB 2.0 headers for things like liquid coolers, RGB controllers, and anything legacy that requires these headers. There are five PWM fan headers down the bottom. You can see that they're kind of in groups. There's two on their own. There's a single and there's two more in another group. There's also a reset button that you can use to reset your PC if you're bench testing and the front panel header for all your lights on your switches to turn on your PC and to let it know that it's on. I hope that all makes sense to you guys. There's two right angled USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A headers on the board here. There's also four SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. There's a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C header. This is not USB 4 here, unfortunately. There's two PCIe power connectors. We typically see this on these AGDT boards for extra power to the slots. There's also a 24 pin power connector as well for regular power. There's a power button in case you're bench testing. There's a diagnostic LED screen for postcodes and some more RGB headers and another PWM fan header. On the top right hand side of the board, there's an LED array for postcode diagnosis as well. There's a blocked off PCIe power connector. This means that it's not required, but you can use it if you wanted to send extra juice to the board. There's a single eight pin EPS power connector and two more PWM fan headers. Now on the top left, there's another EPS power connector and another blocked off PCIe power connector, just in case you want to send some more power to this board. But again, not required. As far as PCIe slots, this one's a bit interesting. All of these are full by 16 sized by 16 wide PCIe Gen 5 slots. However, not all of them will work. It will just depend on the CPU you use. Now, 
For this, it's recommended that you put your GPU in the top slot if you're using a single GPU, but all of these can be utilized. There's also a quick release button that we've seen on many new Gigabyte boards, especially the Z790 boards, they all had this, and this is to quickly release the GPU from the top slot. Now, this uses the TRX50 chipset. It is actively cooled here. And if we take a closer look, you see there's a fan underneath the cover. There's some airflow channels and air vanes, let's call them, for helping to cool the chipset and all of the components underneath that giant heatsink. As far as the VRM layout, this one is quite interesting as well. The TRX50 AI top features a 16 plus eight plus four phase digital VRM setup with 110 amp smart power stages. It's got a full 14 layer PCB, and this is typically what you'll see on these higher end AGDT boards. So it's actually not that over-engineered considering you can use a 96 core CPU on this board. Speaking of 96 core CPUs, the TRX50 AI top has an STR5 socket, which will support both Ryzen Threadripper 7000 and Threadripper Pro 7000 CPUs with varying degrees of compatibility, which we'll come to in a moment. Now to open the socket, it's labeled as 321, and this is how you open it correctly. And yeah, if you've never seen inside the STR5 socket, you can see here, there's a lot of contact pins. It just means you need to be really, really careful if you're deciding to use this board when installing a CPU. On the back side of the board, you'll notice that there is a full cover back plate and it has all the cutouts for all the standoffs on this absolutely huge SSI EEB motherboard. You'll need quite a large case for this board. And yeah, you can see all those standoff holes are exposed and Nothing is being covered for this board. It is just easy to put screws into all of those holes. Now for RAM compatibility, this is where this board gets a little bit interesting as well, because this supports both Ryzen Threadripper Pro and regular Ryzen Threadripper, it has varying degrees of compatibility. So the board supports two terabytes of RAM in total. For the regular Ryzen Threadripper chips, it works in quad channel mode. And for Threadripper Pro, it works in eight channel mode. Typically TRX50 does not support this configuration because every single other TRX50 board only has four RDIMM slots. Think about what's going on here. Gigabyte is using the TRX50 chipset out of spec and it's way more in line with what we'd see on WRX90. This is pretty cool and pretty badass if you ask me. Storage is also affected by whichever CPU you decide to use as well. So let's pop off the heatsink so we can see what's going on here. It's, it's heavy, right? It, it's massive. And it will easily help dissipate the heat for four drives here. You can see it's got pre-installed thermal pads on the backside. And there's also the vent for the fan that's on there as well. But in terms of configuration, you can see here, it uses these spring-loaded connectors that we've seen Gigabyte use for a couple motherboard generations. But... Like I said, for Threadripper Pro, all of the slots here, you can use them with full PCIe Gen 5 by 4 for M.2 storage. However, if it's regular Threadripper 7000, it's PCIe Gen 4 for storage, and this bottom slot here will not work at all with regular Threadripper 7000. Only Threadripper Pro will work with this slot. Something interesting that I thought was worth mentioning on its own was the new Wi-Fi antenna connector. This is a little quick release connector, so no more screwing in pesky Wi-Fi cables. And in terms of the rest of the rear IO, you can see again, that quick connector for the Wi-Fi antennas. There's a Q flash button in case you wanted to update the BIOS on the board. There's a little vent for the VRM cooling for the fan. There's two USB type A 3.2 ports, a line out jack, a microphone jack, display port in, which works for those two USB 4 ports for DisplayPort pass-through. There's dual 10 gigabit ethernet, a whole stack of USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A ports, and an integrated IO shield on the back of the board itself. So yeah, this is quite a stacked board in terms of features.
As far as pricing and availability of the TRX50 AI top from Gigabyte, I'm not sure what that's gonna be. I have an idea of when it's going to release. Apparently it's going to be in September. So I think we're doing this a bit early. Whether or not we're allowed to do this video, I don't know, but this one's been sitting here and it's burning a hole in me. And I was like, I just wanna show you guys this because the fact that this is a TRX50 board with almost all the features of a WRX90 board is really interesting. This is kind of showing us that there's not really a differentiation in the chipset itself. It's just AMD doing AMD things. Let's create two different SKUs for chipsets and kind of say, hey, this is what it should do. But in fact, both chipsets can do both. I hope that makes sense to you guys. It's the only TRX50 board that we've seen so far that has eight DIMM slots. And I've spoken to Gigabyte about this and their answer was, don't tell AMD. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure they know all about this board by now. I think it's pretty interesting that we're seeing this weird paradigm shift with things like AMD saying, hey, our chipset supports these features and Gigabyte's like, yeah, well, actually it supports these features. We saw this in the early 2000s with some boards from ASRock that had two CPU sockets for two different types of CPUs. And this is kind of like that, I would say. Yeah, I think it's a very, very interesting concept. And I'm gonna be building with this board because the AI top utility is now out and you can use it and you can use it for Linux. And I spoke to Gigabyte about this on a call not long ago. And I said, you know what guys, just keep it Linux. If people are doing AI things, they're using Linux. So don't bother working on the software for Windows right now. That's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be building a AI system that sits on your desk with this board. This is the perfect board for it as well, especially with that dual 10 gigabit ethernet, USB 4. This thing is just absolutely chock full of features and I cannot wait to finally get to play with it. I do have a CPU sitting aside for this ready to go as well. So make sure you're subscribed to see that because it's gonna come really, really soon. And I've got a, a really cool rack mount case for this too that you might never have heard of. The people out there who follow the channel and saw what we did at Computex know exactly the rack mount case I'm talking about. All right, that's it. I'm out of here. Hope you enjoyed it. Another motherboard thing, TRX50 and Threadripper. You guys know that I love these crazy platforms. Thanks for watching.